So let me get to it. Psalm 34, David praises God at all times. I will bless the Lord at all, at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear there and be glad. Hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. We thank you, God, for hearing us. And delivered me from all of my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Father, we thank you for saving us. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver him. We thank you, God, for your angels. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. So when you trust in God, there's a blessing attached. Oh, my God. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Oh, God. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So when you go to seek peace, you got to pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hear and deliver them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart and save as such as of be of a contrite spirit contrite means like remorseful uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered him out of them all no matter what we face no matter what we go through he's gonna deliver us out of everything he keepeth all his bones not one of them is broken we thank you father evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous will be desolate the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate desolate so a good thing about this uh particular song psalm is it reminds us to bless the lord at all times good bad and different even when i don't feel like it even when i don't want to um one of the good things or the one of the great revelations that the lord gave me some weeks back is that my feelings how i feel is not his truth so we got to know that yeah, and another thing I heard the Lord say this morning is we cannot live in our feelings. We cannot live in our feelings. And there was something, um, I think it was verse, verse 13 says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking. God, um, what we could get from that is when we're going through hard times, right? We, in one situation, in one, in one instance, we can't, we can't, oh, praise the Lord, God. And then we're talking against what? against that it's not going to balance it out so you have to be be mindful of the things that you say you know life and death is in the power of our tongues be mindful of what you say in one breath you're praising god and then the next minute you're speaking against that very thing you want to be um you want to just be mindful of that um one thing that the lord kind of has been dealing with me for the last couple of weeks is to um think about the area where the enemy has been harassing you right the enemy has been poking you you know kind of like bothering you could be using somebody at your job could be using a family member whatever area it is think about that area and begin to apply apply pressure um with your praise praise is a weapon that we use so that that's something to think about for anybody who the enemy is stalking harassing he's throwing little jabs he's trying to remind you of your handicaps or reminding you of things that's not going on in your life right now turn apply some pressure and turn up with your praise so this morning when i was praying here's the things that here's a couple of things that i heard the lord say he said for some of you that you're about to go through a genesis moment genesis means the origin the beginning of a thing right he wanted he wanted me to remind you what did i say in the beginning right what were my instructions in the beginning so for some of you maybe if you have a business idea the lord gave you and you somehow deviated from what he said because of life because of different things that happened he said he said what did i say to you in the beginning what were my instructions you deviated from the original plan, but I'm sending you back. Look, and some of you got to look in your old journals, your old notebooks. And he said, don't forget what I said. And the scripture that he gave me was John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Um, emphasis on in the beginning was the word. What was the word that the father gave you in the beginning before he, 
before you started that ministry, before you started that business, before you started whatever it is he told you, he's going to send you back to that very thing. Life or the pandemic or something might have deviated you from what from following his instructions and what he told you to do. But he's getting ready to send some of us back to the very thing he told us to do because there's a blessing in the instructions that he gave. You know, sometimes with um, I was talking to a, one of my friends the other day and she was saying how she has to pivot her business now because of different things going on. And I said to her, well, what did the Lord say when he first gave you that idea? What did he tell you to do? You deviated from what he told you to do, right? So now it's time to get back to what he said in the beginning. Go back to your old journals. Go back to your old notebooks. What are some of the things that, I wish I had a journal I can pick up. What are some of the things that the Lord told you maybe months, years ago to do and you still haven't done yet? So that's all I got. I'm going to look at a couple of your comments and then I'm going to go. Let me see what y'all saying in the comment section. Mighty God, he sure is. Restoration. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for restoration. The area of mine is relationships. God help me overcome it. Give me an idea of how to do it. Yes. Um, look in the book of Proverbs. Wisdom. That book, as soon as I touch uh, the book, I was reading Proverbs the other day. Um, as soon as I touch it, it's just almost like wisdom just comes from, from out of nowhere. I'm, I am crying because this was specifically for me. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Christian song in a grocery store this morning. I have yet to start get licensed for a mobile truck business. I have the old journals. Look at them again. The father's going to give you more revelation on that. The area I helped is family. Yeah, a lot of a lot of us go through a relationship. The enemy pokes us with relationships. He'll use certain people uh, to remind you like how we think about Hannah in the Bible. Her, uh, the other wife was reminding Hannah that she couldn't have a baby, reminding her of the handicap, reminding her of the very thing that she could not carry. And so Hannah, that provoked Hannah to get up and go and pray. And Hannah postured herself in prayer and um, she prayed so much. The man of God thought she was drunk. And then eventually she got the breakthrough. She got what she been praying for. The Bible says that the Lord closed her womb. So I believe that Hannah knew the one that closed it had the ability to open it back up. So the enemy wants to send little reminders and throw a little shade. We got to overcome it and turn up our praise. Want to heal totally and completely. Absolutely. Absolutely. The divine exchange. You think about the woman with the issue of blood, like her, her faith is the reason why she got whole, right? She had the audacity to touch the hem of his cloth of his, uh, of his garment, right? That wasn't, she wasn't even supposed to be outside bleeding like that. I need y'all to pray for me. I'm getting ready to move to Birmingham, Washington next year. I want to make sure this is a good move for me. You posture yourself in prayer and ask the Lord to, to show you. I remember when the Lord was calling me to Atlanta. Um, before anybody gave me a prophetic word, the Lord spoke it to me. It was just confirmation when um, other people had said it. Praying to get back to where I was before the pandemic. The Lord is going to do even greater for you. Restoration even on a greater level than before the pandemic it's going to be a new thing is this for a backsliders for anybody who needs a word from the lord i was just looking for an agreement and to help spread the word and encourage look at god god bless you thank you so much is needed all right you're welcome you have a word of wisdom for me i don't operate like that i operate by the holy spirit if the holy spirit gives me a word then i'll um release it i don't just you know, I don't just throw it out there like that. Confirmation, confirmation. Wait for me and my family. Praying for my sister Jackie to get the housing assistance she needs in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, does anybody need me to repeat anything before I go? I'm not going to stay on here too long. Just wanted to read that and pray for my grandson, John. He's in jail and he go to court this month. So please pray for him. We believe in God for favor in the courtroom. I can tell y'all a quick story. Y'all know I have stories for days. Anybody that knows. Um... I remember I was out here in these streets a long time ago, riding dirty, and um, I got pulled over, and my license was suspended, and I was facing 21 days in jail. And so um, I got to, they, they sent me a letter in the mail telling me when my court date was. I went to court at that time. I got to court. There was a mix-up with my paperwork. They told me they don't have it on record that I'm supposed to be here, but come back a few hours later. I came back a few hours later and the judge was just like, I don't know why you're here. <laughs> I don't know why you're here. This must be some mix up. 
I don't know why you're here. And I knew that was God. Of course, I repented for riding dirty um, at that point. But God worked that thing out. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. They just looking like, why is she here? Why? There's a mix up with the paperwork. I was given a word 10 years ago to start a ministry and to start writing a book. Such confirmation because I need to start back after hearing this for over a week. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there's a blessing on the other side of the book. Not only is it going to bring you generate money and income, but somebody else needs that book. You know, your yes to God, your uh, your purpose, your your destiny, your assignment. It's not always just about you. It's about all the people connected to you. When you gave God your yes, you gave it for everybody connected to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Anybody need me to repeat anything before I get off today? I was kind of short today. I just wanted to read that in all times, bless the Lord at all times, good, bad, indifferent, whether I feel like it or not, my feelings are not his truth and we cannot live in his feelings. We cannot live in our, well, our feelings, <laughs> not his feelings, our feelings. Yes, God is a lawyer. God did it for me. I got my SS without a lawyer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praying for deliverance and healing, please. My first time. Thank you so much for joining on today. We believe in God. For your deliverance and your healing. You know, another thing too, when you're believing God for like healing in your body, set the atmosphere in your house, right? I, for me, if I'm feeling sick or something, I'll have the scriptures playing in the background and then I'll find a bunch of scriptures about healing and I'll just start receiving that I'm already healed. Father, I thank you for healing me. Father, you said in your word by your stripes, I am healed and I'll start confessing that. So setting the tone and setting the atmosphere because in certain environments and certain atmospheres, uh, certain diseases and, and, and Corona and all of that cannot exist. When Jesus shows up, all that other stuff cannot exist. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The Lord remind us to be right with him in all areas of our life. Absolutely. Absolutely. My husband questioned my faith, my belief in faith because I had messed up. Well, we all messed up. The good thing is you got Jesus to get back up again, right? Repent, get back up again. There's something in my stomach from witchcraft, giving something to drink and eat. Mm, the Holy Ghost fire be upon whatever that is, whatever that is, wherever that is. Charged six felonies for doing God's work and he didn't let the devil's plan work. Absolutely. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your word. Remember, for somebody, you're about to experience a Genesis moment. Genesis means the origin, the beginning. The Father said, what did I say in the beginning? What were my instructions in the beginning? You deviated from the original plan, but I'm sending you back. Don't forget what I said and then look in your old journal, some old notebooks and things like that for things that you've written down in the past. All right, y'all. Jesus is a healer. I was paralyzed. I couldn't talk good because of a stroke. But look at Jesus Christ's blood walking and talking right now. Hallelujah. 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 He is a healer. Who you call him is who he'll be. So there's certain seasons where you might need him to be a healer. You might need him to be a deliverer. Who you call him is who he'll be to you. What is your view on speaking in tongues? I believe in speaking in tongues. I know everybody does it, um, but I do. Um, so not everybody's tongues is, you know, of God, but I, I believe I believe in it. That's just my personal opinion. And a lot of people say, well, I don't believe in it because I can't understand. But if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can tell you uh, what that person is saying. I remember one time my spiritual mother was live and she was speaking in her heavenly language. And um, I didn't understand. And instead of me criticizing her speaking in her heavenly language, I said, Holy Spirit, reveal to me what she was saying. And so now every time she speaks in her heavenly language, I can understand what she's saying. Um, one day she was saying whatever she's saying. I'm, I'm typing it in the comments to anybody else who couldn't understand. I'm like, this is what she's saying in the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, I believe in it. Contact the prophet for cleansing instructions. One day. All right, y'all. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. If you are on my text community, I'll send you the notes sometime this evening. Um, if you're on the prayer challenge, 21 day prayer challenge, we are on, I think it's day 11 today. Yeah, day 11, y'all. So keep going strong. If you fell off from being on the challenge, it's okay. Get back up. We're just building a lifestyle, building a habit of uh, prayer 
of prayer. I need to break the soul tie from a toxic ex. Oh, I know. I was in a, a seven-year soul tie. Jesus. Um, but God did that thing. Um, I had to make a decision, though, that I didn't want to be soul tied here anymore. So that's what it started as a decision. I had to throw out any kind of things connecting us together, throw it in the trash, delete old pictures. I had to make a decision. I had to, that I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, the, we, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost could sever ungodly soul ties. I think it could start with a decision though. Like, I don't want to be tied to this person anymore. Um, sometimes you got to delete them off social media and all of that. So you're not going back and look, looking at what they're, um, <laughs> what they're doing and what they're not doing. All right, y'all. How long? Well, fasting, that's, that's between, I, that's between you and God. Um, uh, he might call you on a three day fast. He might call you on a seven day fast. He might call you on a 21 day fast. Um, I don't usually go off of what people tell me to do unless it's like my leaders or something like that. I just go off of what the Holy Spirit tells me. And that's why it's very, very important to always y'all have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, have a relationship with God. And you do that by dwelling. You do that by abiding. You do that by carving out time every day to spend in his presence and just be quiet, just listen, love on him, however it is that works for you. Um, I think coming up, probably after the holidays, we're going to do, I'm going to do another challenge, a tithing challenge where we tithe 10% of our day in the presence of God. And that will help us build up a habit of spending time with God. Because sometimes, um, we think that we could just access God through everybody else and never pray and never do our own thing. We have to have our own relationship. When we make it in, if we make it in, the Lord's not going to ask your pastor about you. Not going to ask your mama about you. He's going to ask you what about you. So you want to you want to make sure you have a relationship. And that's how we navigate through life. Holy Spirit is our secret to success. That's our that's our secret strategy, right? When the world is doing this and they got this going on, the Holy Spirit will show us how we navigate as people of God.